Hello, everyone. Welcome to VTN Sunday. Jeannie's going to be ministering to us in just a little while. We're going to have a great day of worship and study in the Lord. And the message today is part three of a sermon that I taught called Eliminating Failure. Today, we'll study the importance of love and forgiveness in our journey of walking in divine victory. The love and forgiveness of God has been freely given to all those that believe. And understanding this is crucial to living a life free from the chains of failure. So stay tuned for the message. I know you'll be blessed. But first, here's Jeannie to sing A Perfect Heart. beautiful voice is unforgettable. Thou art welcome in this place. Her inspirational songs are timeless. He's a healing Jesus. He's a healing Jesus. For years, audiences have cherished the music of Jeannie Caldwell. From I'm a Believer, To the anointing. It's the anointing that really makes a difference. 
Every song makes you feel in his presence. Stand your ground against the devil. Stand your ground in the Lord. Best Don't love hits, hidden classics, all found on Genie, Colors, and The Peaceable Kingdom. CDs you'll treasure forever. Buy yours today wherever the products of Happy and Jeannie Caldwell are sold. Here's Pastor Caldwell with today's message. God even defeated the enemy for you, gave you the name of Jesus to demonstrate his defeat, and yet we're going around fighting each other. Mad at each other, unforgiveness, lying, cheating, stealing, slandering, gossiping. Like one lady said, she was a gossip. And somebody confronted her and said, you know, this gossip is wrong. She said, I know it, but I love it so. <laughs> she didn't want to quit gossiping because she loved it. The Bible says death and life are in the power of the tongue. Those that love it will eat the fruit thereof. She had a lot of heartache in her life too. So you have to walk in love. Your faith won't work. Well, I, you just don't understand. I was hurt. We've all been hurt. I was lied about. We've all been lied about. I was slandered. We've all been slandered. Well, I took offense. You shouldn't have taken it. It's growing. It's festering on the inside of you. You've got to release those people. You've got to release that situation. Let it go. Well, so-and-so hurt me. Well, forgive them. Forgive them? I don't want to forgive them. Well, then you can't walk in love. And if you can't walk in love, your faith won't work. And you're stuck where you are. And you'll never eliminate failure out of your life. Y'all ready to go on? There is no excuse for the child of God to be defeated. I, I don't care what happens to you. You cannot find an excuse in the Bible to justify your defeat. You cannot blame God. There is no excuse for defeat or failure for the child of God. Because the scripture is totally the opposite. We quoted 1 John 5, 4. Whatever is born of God does what? Overcomes the world. 1 John 4, 4. Turn there. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 4 says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. The greater one lives in you. Jesus himself lives in you. Let me give you three points to support this, and then we'll look at the scriptures. Number one, God is stronger than the devil. Now, to some people, that would be news. They think the devil is more powerful than God. Have you ever thought about an atheist who spends their entire life defending themselves of what they don't believe in. They spend their entire lives defending what they don't believe exists. How dumb is that? God is stronger than Satan. Jeannie and I were praying for a young girl. This was years ago down to juvenile correction facility. It used to be out on Roosevelt. I don't know if it's still there or not. And uh, we were asked by the family to go pray for her. And so we went and we prayed. And, I mean, she's locked up behind bars. And, and there was a, the cleaning woman was out in the lobby. It was, it was after hours. And yeah, the cleaning woman was out in the lobby cleaning, mopping, and dusting. And, and uh, we came out and, and this cleaning lady... <clears throat> She said, I, I just don't understand what gets into young people today. I said, ma'am, have you heard of the devil? She said, oh, yeah, I was raised on a good old devil. That's what she said. Which means she was taught how powerful the devil was and how you never know what God's going to. And that's sad, but that's where a lot of people have been taught. God is stronger than Satan. Say it out loud. God is stronger than Satan. You believe that? Yes. Number two, demons have no authority over Christians. Say it. Demons have no authority over Christians. And number three, 
The promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God are yea and amen. The promises of God are not maybe and somehow or if. The promises of God are yes and amen. Now, go to Revelation chapter 12. I mean, it's one thing to, to make statements, make proclamations, and teach, but I want to show you where you can find it for yourself. Revelation 12, 7 through 10. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought in his angels. And the dragon and his angels prevailed not. They lost. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And he tells you who the dragon is. The great dragon was cast out. That old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down. God's more powerful than the devil. He kicked him out of heaven when he arose and tried to rebel against God and overthrow God, take over his throne and become God himself. God kicked him out of heaven. Satan is not more powerful than God. Number two, demons have no authority over Christians. Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, and let's look at verse 17. Luke's 10, 17, the 70 returned again with joy. You know, after the 12, then there were 70 others. These are disciples saying, Lord, the demons are subject unto us through your name. And Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. Underline nothing. Nothing. Nothing shall by any means hurt you. I had the privilege, the honor, and the pleasure of knowing and traveling with Brother Lester Sumrall for many years. And Brother Sumrall was probably one of the boldest ministers I think I've ever seen. He had no fear whatsoever period. I account to the fact part of it was his personality, his DNA as a, as a man, as a human. The other part was the time that he spent with people like Howard Carter and Smith Wigglesworth, <coughs> excuse me, and others like him in previous generations. And um, Brother Summerall told me that one time he was... Uh, over in the Hawaiian Islands, he was building some TV stations over there, and he said the, uh, the devil himself uh, appeared in his hotel room just as he was going to bed and told him, I don't want you in these islands. You get out of here. Brother Summerall just barked back at him and said, No, I'm not leaving, and I'm going to bed, and when I get up in the morning, you better be gone. He said there was an eerie presence in his room. And he went to bed, and when he got up, the devil was gone, and he's got about four or five stations over there today. <laughs> another time, he was in another country, and uh, he had gotten in bed, and uh, his bed, uh, demon spirits, had shoved it about six feet from the wall. I mean, you know, if you're in your bed and it moves six feet from the wall, you'd know it. <laughs> right? Well... Most of you would. <laughs> he sat up, looked around, and said, put it back, and went back to sleep. Woke up the next morning, his bed was back up against the wall. You shouldn't be afraid of the devil. Hallelujah. So demons have no authority over Christians. I'm talking about there's no excuse for the child of God to be defeated. Let's eliminate failure out of our life. And the only way we can do that is to build ourselves up in confidence in the word that God means what he says, he can't lie, and we can stand on it and believe him. Now, this is going to help you even more. The promises of God are yes and amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 
2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I, the, best, the best story I've heard about uh, a minister of the gospel that stood against the devil, and I've heard it quoted from different sources, and they use different men's names, and I don't, I don't really know who's accurate or who's right. But there was a powerful minister of God years ago, even before Brother Sumrall's generation, that the devil appeared at the foot of his bed. And this guy just looked up and said, oh, it's just you, and went back to sleep. <laughs> that is an insult to the devil. Oh, it's just you, and then went back to sleep. Hallelujah. For, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 20, all the promises of God in him are yea and in him amen unto the glory of God by us. Did you get that? Now he which establishes us with you in Christ and hath anointed us is God. Very few Christians ever think of themselves as being anointed. But you are anointed. You have been anointed of God. Jesus Christ. Christ is not his last name. Christ means the anointed one. And he who has anointed us it's God. It's, it's hard for us because we've been pounded on for so many years that we're nothings and nobodies and pilgrims and strangers and unworthy worms. It's hard for us to accept the fact that God has anointed us. The Lord's spoken to me several times over the last few months letting me know that I am now, he said, he said son, you're entering into the harvest years of your life. Do you understand what that means? I said, I think so, Lord. He said, it's harvest time. What happens at harvest time? You bring in the crops. You bring in the, the, the harvest. It's, it's, it's harvest time. You sow seed for the most of your life. You meditate the word. You sow the seed. And then there comes a time where there's harvest. Let me tell you what I'm going to minister on Wednesday night. I think I'm going to minister on this Wednesday night. And I've been doing some studying on it. About how long you should live. And how to get there. Because your lifespan is important to God. And your lifespan has to do with your assignment. You know, in Psalm 91, when it says you can live as long as you're satisfied, you have to really study out that word satisfied. What does it mean to be satisfied? Well, you have to understand what your assignment is, what God has called you to do. How many of you have gotten the revelation, the fact that you're just not here sitting out time and space? You're not just here occupying the air. You're here for a purpose. You're here for a reason. God has set you here. You might think it's insignificant, but it's not to God. And as long as you are satisfied means as long as you are still fulfilling that purpose and working on that promise and working on your assignment. One commentator said it this way. When you get to the point where you realize you have fulfilled what God called you to do in the earth and you are fed up with that world out there, that world holds no interest to you whatsoever. That's what it means to be satisfied. You have fulfilled your assignment. You've finished your course like Paul said. And that world out there has no hook in you at all. There's nothing out there that even interests you at all. It's like John Wayne said one time. You have no idea how much I don't care <laughs> about that world. Now, I love God and I love the people in the world and the people of the world need to hear what you know. 
They need to hear your words. They need your compassion and your love. That's one of the reasons we're all here. Amen. But the love of the world is not in us. The love of the world system. God so loved the world. God so loved the people that he gave his only begotten son. But not the system. The system is not his. The system is a Babylonian system. And it's ultimately going to destroy itself. And it is dysfunctional as we speak, and it will eventually collapse. Hmm. Okay, let's close with this. Where our failure really is. Once we build into ourselves and establish ourselves, where is our failure really? Where, where our failure really is. Mark chapter 9, verse 24. Mark chapter 9, and let's look verses 23 and 24. <clears throat> Jesus said unto him, If you can believe, if who can believe? You can believe. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Oh, you, here, let's go back to the meditation of the words. You got to meditate on this to get it. You can't just read it. You got to meditate on it. All things are possible to him that believeth. There's not anything that is impossible to a believer. You say, oh, Pastor, you just don't know it's impossible. Not to a believer, it isn't. It's not impossible to him that believeth. And this man, the father of the child, cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. At least he was honest enough to admit he just wasn't there yet. And there's not one thing wrong with that. In fact, it'd be better for you to say, you know, I'm just not there yet. Than to try to step out where you have no faith for like when we were praying for that little boy drowning in the swimming pool years ago, his daddy asked a bunch of his minister friends to come pray for him, raise him from the dead. And there were guys in that room that said later, after several hours, we never should have been in here. We never believed you could raise this kid from the dead in the first place. Well, they should have said that before they went in there. When he called them and said, would you come? They should have said, you know, I love you and your son. I have much compassion for you, but... I just don't have the faith. I just don't believe I can do that. So I better not come. Amen. <laughs> if you want somebody praying for you to live and not die, you better ask them if they believe first. <laughs> you don't want somebody praying, Lord, if it be thy will. <laughs> no, find out what they will. Find out what they believe. Because you know it's God's will. Okay. Our failure is with us. I trust today's message ministered to you. Be sure and join me next week as we wrap up our study on eliminating failure. Remember, God's not the author of failure, but of victory. He's faithful to fulfill His promises. You can live a life of triumph and success as we end today's broadcast. Let's remember that God's love and forgiveness are available to everybody. If you're ready to receive it, but don't have a relationship with Jesus, I'd like for you to join me in this prayer. Just close your eyes and repeat after me. Just say, Father God, I believe Jesus is your son. I believe you raised him from the dead. Jesus, come into my heart and save me now, I pray. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me out of your heart and you meant it, I'd like to send you this booklet called God Loves You. It'll help answer questions you may have as you get started in your Christian life or help you live a Christian life. 
Go online to vtntv.com. You can download the book for free or you can call 1-888-641-3375. And tell the operator you prayed that prayer with me and ask Jesus to come into your heart and I'll send you this book free of charge. Such a blessing to hear from you and receive your prayer requests and praise reports. Let me hear from you. Remember, we're here to pray and stand in agreement with you. If you have a prayer request or a praise report, email me at prayer at vtntv.com or you can call 1-888-641-3375. Don't go away. Stay there. I'll be right back after this promo. Depression, debt, failure, feelings of unworthiness. These attitudes can keep you imprisoned and unable to receive God's abundant blessings. Pastor Happy Caldwell has written a book that will set you free from these limitations. In Unleashing Heaven's Blessings, you'll find what traps you and what will set you free. Get your copy today by calling 1-888-641-3375. Walk in God's supernatural provision and change the course of your life. Be sure and purchase your copy of Unleashing Heaven's Blessings today. I believe the information, I know the information will be a blessing to you. And remember, VTN's on Facebook. You can find us at VTN, your Arkansas Christian Connection. You can also follow me at, on X at happy underscore Caldwell. And be sure to join Jeannie and me next Sunday, same time. And remember, happy is the man that finds wisdom and the man that gets understanding. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If this program has ministered to you, please consider making VTN part of your regular giving. To make a donation or to contact this ministry, write to VTN PO Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas 72221. You may also call 501-223-2525. Today's program is available to watch on demand. Log on to VTNTV.com and click watch. VTN is also on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. You may also order a copy of today's show on DVD by calling 1-888-641-3375. Ask for the offer number on the screen. And join us again next time for VTN Sunday with Happy and Jeannie Caldwell.